At this time, before we have the treasurer, I want to get a receipt for one hundred dollars that was donated. I'm not gonna call any names. So, Miss James, if you would make me a receipt and put donated, and then I'll pass it on to uh, to, to to the secretary. I actually, me, actually have a receipt with my call, Mr. Chairman. She has a receipt. But let me just explain something while we're talking about the treasurer. From now on, from this day forward. All money would be collected by the assistant recorder. She would give you a receipt as you as you pay. She would give you a receipt as you pay. And at the end of the night, the only thing the tre this treasurer will be doing is receiving money from the secretary and paying bills. You will get a receipt from this night forward. So we have a tracking record that will go into our minutes. Who paid dues? It will be in the minutes, so we won't have this problem that we're having now. People are saying they're paying dues. We have no kind of record to know if you paid or not. So from this day forward, it will be in our minutes that who paid dues on February the 4th. If I understand. That will be a lot more simple because you come back next year and say, I paid in February. No problem. You just put the minutes out and look at the minutes. Okay? First, we have a copy of the receipt in the receipt book. You will get a receipt. All right. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have roll call. Uh, we'll get that part of the way first. Can you raise your hand so we know who's here? Yeah, just say if you're present here, whatever. Um, this is for the county committee members that are, are, that are here. Um, so we got uh, Vivian Miller Cody. Present, sir. Uh, Glenn Ritchie. Here. Uh, Ronnie Pierce is here. Uh, Sandra Tooley. Here. Willie Rayford. Janie McGinn. Here. J.D. Rice. Hello. Mr. Lawrence here. Yeah. Uh, Norma Dave. Present. Gregory Moore. Here. Catherine Grant. Here. Okay. Angela Green. Here. James Parker. Here. John Quarterman. Present. Constellino James. Present. Tina Valenti. Here. Gretchen Quarterman. Here. Uh, Clara Reed. Lee Allen. Present. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have 18, 18 committee members is here. So we have the election tonight. We'll be, we'll be having two elections tonight. We've got 18. Is there any uh, ex officios here? You call double team. Extra sharper. Extra sharper is here, so that'll be twenty. Anybody else? Any more extra officials? There'll be a total of twenty votes. Let's vote tonight. Okay. Now we'll have our report from our uh, membership. At this time, sir, I just invited five people here to this evening. We're short up and signed the membership tonight, so everything is great. Okay. Qualifying. Glenn Richie. I'll keep this quick because I know that, um, our chairman said we're getting out of here on time today. Um, basically, we've all heard the news about the mayoral race, so we got a, a new update on that. And so, um, just like what I talked about last month, the Democratic Party, we only endorsed one mm -hmm. candidate. Um, so the chairman and I, we, we're going to have a plan of action about that. Um, also, I'm going to be contacting our um, city council that's going to be um, up for re-election and making sure that they're planning on uh, continuing. And if so, uh, that's great. If not, then we'll, we'll need to respond accordingly. So that's pretty much it for now. Thank you. Also, let me just come up, ask, uh, Dr. Tan. Will you give us some comments on what we discussed about uh, about the mayor's race? How we was going to handle that? Did you... Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, I accepted the responsibility. I've been called by the chair. In the month of September, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from all the candidates. Of course, we need time, and we can hear what they're talking about. I'm certainly going to know what their platform is at that particular time, and I've decided to spearhead that, so that means I'll be responsible for organizing the whole Kaboom for us in September. Sounds good? Yes! that just come here, so that makes 21. Uh, also, during, the, during, our, during our barbecue, we'll also have the mayor candidates and anybody else that wants to speak at our barbecue during that time, but we will be, hopefully everything will be kind of weird itself out by the time we have our, we really have our sit down and talk to the candidates. Uh, public uh, elections. Dr. Marks is not here. He's a little ill, but he did want me to pass on some information to you about the election that's going on in 176. Uh, you live in District 176, you need to be voting. The voter turnout so far is, is uh, anybody have a count? 122 as of Friday afternoon. 122. Wow. 122. 10,000 voters in the district and 122 voters. 122. That's, that's, that's a pretty easy math, isn't it? We still about 10,000 to show. Very simple. We're it off. Folks, we got to do better. We're going we're gonna to win it. Then. We just got to get out there and vote. That's all we got to do. I think we have the people in Alliance County to do it, but we if we're not getting out voting and we're not pushing voting in our districts. Uh, then we're not going to win anything. But 122 is a bad number. The East Splash, uh, that's coming up on, on the, uh, what is it? March 19th on the East Splash. That's where everybody can vote, but the District 176, only the one living, living in the district to be able to vote. I think Catherine has an election yes, okay. calendar. I'd like, to, I'd like to hand out the calendar of, of elections to okay. everyone while we're talking. All right. So with East Splash, everybody can vote, but 176, only the ones that live in that district can vote. The election is on February 12th. <coughs> Since she's passed notes, I'm gonna skip over her and go to fundraising. Anybody have any questions on on, on elections? Fundraising. Mm -hmm. One second. Anybody have any questions on on elections? Okay, Ms. James, fundraisers. Hello, everyone. I don't really have anything. You come up front so you can. Hello everyone, good evening. Um, I don't have anything to report as far as um, kind of ideas, but if you do want to be on the fundraising committee, please let me know after the meeting um, tonight for about, I will be here for at least five minutes. And the ones who have already signed up, we just have a meeting. But I do want to report one thing that we already have everything secured for our annual barbecue, which is going to be held July the, the 2nd this year, 2019, from 6 p.m to about 8, 8-ish, or 9 o'clock, uh, 9 p.m. So just um, a little bit more information is going to go out. The tickets will be the same, $25, and we'll keep you updated on the information. Thank you. It's very important that everybody can take part in this, this fundraiser of seven tickets because we really need need the funds. Uh, if we're going to operate to be able to get, support our candidates, we really need some money right now. You see, you see the financial report. The shape it's in, so uh, we need everybody's support. Okay, in this, in this part, everybody can take part in it because you can buy tickets and you can ask others to buy tickets. Public relations. What happened? I'm sorry. What was the question? You have, you have anything about public relations? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. Okay. Uh, we had three representatives from Lyons County to go to the state committee, uh, state convention, to, uh, committee convention to do whatever they do up there. I'll let them explain <laughs> all that. But uh, if uh, the three of y'all could get together and decide who's going to talk. I'm going to talk. 
Um, my name is Gretchen Quarterman, in case you don't know me, and I'm one of the three uh, state committee members who are, have finished our term. Our term's expired on the last day of January, passed. Um, Deborah Tan and Extra Sharper are our other two state committee members, and we were in Atlanta on Saturday past, not, not this one, but the one before, um, where we cast the votes for, on behalf of all of y'all, uh, to elect our new leadership. And the new chairman of the uh, state committee is Nikima Williams. She's a state senator. Um, and she received 191 votes. Her competitor was uh, Daniel Blackman, and he received 53 votes. So it was 75% uh, of the vote went to Nikima. The party is pretty unified behind her to say, well, let's get going forward and elect Democrats. Um, Ted Terry was elected the first <coughs> vice chair. He had previously served in the uh, qualifying position. Um, Sarah Todd was re-elected as the county uh, party's person over us, so she will be working with the county parties and the districts. She is also returning. New, um, Adrienne White was elected for uh, candidate recruitment. Um, Justin Holsomback was elected as the treasurer. Uh, no, as the secretary. Jason Estevez was elected the treasurer and. Uh, B. Wynn was elected over the constituency groups, and constituency groups which we could have in our own county committee would be um, uh, African American caucus, a Green caucus, a Asian American caucus, a Women's caucus, a Senior caucus. We can decide if we want to have those constituency groups um, that would then participate also at the state level. So if you're interested in that, um, let whoever gets elected tonight to the state committee know, um, and they'll plug you in to that. Um, I would like to yield a little bit of my time. Do we have a place for candidates for our candidate, Barbara Griffin? Good. Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, everybody who's here tonight. Um, I did speak a few minutes last time. If you give me just a couple more minutes. My name is Barbara Griffin. My day job is a social worker with dialysis patients. I also am chair of the nonprofit theater group. Um, I'm a member of the National Association of Social Workers Political Action Candidate Endorsement Group. I have been a past chair of the Ware County Democratic Committee, <coughs> vice chair of the NEACP. This has been a whole new adventure for me. One of the things that's happened is I set up a campaign page on Facebook, and I've had lots of people tell me I should go back to New York or possibly move to California. <laughs> uh, actually, that's one of the nicer things I was told, because I was also told to drop dead. So uh, that tells you a lot about our neighbors, right? Um, I've been living in Georgia for 48 years. Uh, my slogan is a better life for all Georgians. Atlanta is not Georgia. I think sometimes they forget that. Yes. But we have cities, towns, and a lot of rural areas. I was born and grew up in a big city, but I have lived in places like this and smaller the whole time I've been in Georgia. I've also been working in healthcare the whole time I've been in Georgia. And it's clear to me that we have a health care emergency. Mm -hmm. And excuse me, that's the thing I feel most passionate about mm -hmm. because that's what I've been doing for so long. I work in substance abuse, I work in hospice, but health care as a whole is getting to be literally a nightmare lately. Mm -hmm. So every day we have to fight for our patients to get the things they need. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is a way bigger emergency than the board crisis, which you know, I'm sure we agree that that might be just a little bit manufactured. Um, rural hospitals are truly in danger. Georgia is in third place in national hospital closer, closures since 2010. Health insurance is expensive, and even if you have good health insurance, a lot of times you're not in that work and you can't find providers. I've had that same experience myself, plus ending up with these huge co-pays, that you still you know, have thousands of dollars in medical bills even when your insurance pays. So um, that's, that's a really huge concern of mine. We voted against Medicaid expansion. There are a lot of new plans out there. And the answer is obviously to have more people insured. Whether it can be done on the state level or not, honestly, I don't know. But that would be a really big thing for me to vote for, to fight for. Georgia's uninsurance rate actually increased. 13.4% in 2017. 
Um, the fourth highest rate in the nation, wow. yay for us. The rural Georgia rate of uninsured low-income residents is 38% versus 30% in urban areas. And to me, that's unacceptable. People become ill and they die because they can't afford to see a doctor. And by the time they actually go to see a doctor, then they have an illness that's not curable. And then they qualify for help. That's certainly the same with what I see with my patients. And even if you have good insurance, if you develop a serious illness, you go on the houses, you are going to lose everything you have. Um, that is my, one of my main goals. I got a lot of others, but I'll keep the time short. I'm dedicated to changing this. As your representative, I will do everything I can to make Georgia a better place to live.